50 Cent took over the entire industry and brought his homies in G-Unit with him to the top. But after crazy internal beef, assaults, assassinations, and shootouts in the street, the crew fell apart completely. This is the shocking story of how it all went down. Before 50 Cent ever linked up with Eminem and Dr. Dre to release some of the best-selling rap albums of all time, he was hustling hard in the industry with his homies Lloyd Banks and Tony Yayo. 50, Banks, and Yayo all came up in South Jamaica, Queens, and have been rapping together since they were teenagers. 50 was the first one to start building up any momentum, though. After almost going to prison for nine years, he realized he needed to go hard in the booth, and he ended up linking with Jam Master J from Run DMC and learned how to perfect his craft. 50 made a name for himself in New York with tracks like Ghetto Quran, but it also allegedly led to him getting shot and blackballed in the industry. On the track, he name dropped a drug dealer named Kenneth Supreme McGriff, who allegedly put the green light on 50's head and told everyone not to work with him. Before he got shot, 50 had a deal with Columbia Records, but they dropped him while he recovered. And that's when G-Unit really started putting in work to make it in the industry by themselves. They started dropping mixtapes without any labels backing them. And in 2002, the hard work finally paid off when M discovered 50 and gave him a million dollars to sign with Shady Records. 50's name was already buzzing in the industry, but what happened next shocked the entire game. 50 dropped his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, and took over immediately. These days, it's easier for an unknown artist to go viral with a hot track on social media. But what 50 did back then was almost impossible. He went from being just another New York street rapper to a certified superstar overnight. He sold more records than any other artist that year and eventually went nine times platinum with the record. Interscope scored a massive hit by having 50 on the roster, and after his album popped off, they gave him his own imprint label, G-Unit Records. According to 50, the label wanted him to follow up with another solo record to keep the momentum up, but instead, he decided to put the crew on and drop a G-Unit album instead. Tony Yayo had been booked on a weapons case while they were working on the album, so he only had a couple of features on the record, but 50 brought in Young Buck and signed him to G-Unit to fill the gap. Their tape came out and blew up immediately. The record sold millions of copies and put G-Unit on the map as the biggest rap crew in the industry. At the same time, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine from Interscope discovered the game and wanted to put him in G-Unit. The game was a perfect fit, too. He came up in the streets of Compton, and just like 50, he had survived getting shot and almost dying. Game wasn't even trying to be a rapper back in the day and just got money in the streets. But while he was recovering, he started studying classic hip-hop albums he could find and decided to hop in the booth and leave the trenches behind. Game hopped on Young Buck and Lloyd Banks' solo albums while he was writing his first record, and it was clear from the jump that they all worked well together. He popped off with a single, How We Do with 50 Cent, and their second collab, Hate It or Love It, reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The situation could have been a huge win for everyone, but before Game even dropped his first album, there was already issues going on inside the crew. One of the first tracks that got 50's name buzzing in the industry was his single How to Rob, where he took shots at some of the biggest artists in the world and described how he would set them up and rob them. It was a controversial track that got a lot of attention, and it made 50 realize that beef sold records. 50 proved he wasn't afraid to smoke with anyone, and he never hesitated to spark a beef with other rappers, even if they were legends. The game wasn't on the same kind of time, though. It's safe to say without 50 Cent, G-Unit would have never existed. He put his homies on and let the label link the game up with them, but he also expected absolute loyalty when it came to war. These days, everyone knows how disrespectful 50 is, but back when he first blew up, nobody expected all the drama he started. Game was a fan of most rappers that 50 was going after, and he didn't want to inherit the beef just because they were in the same crew. But instead of settling it behind closed doors, 50 went on Hot 97 and announced live on the air that the game had been kicked out of G-Unit. Game was in New York too, so he pulled up to the station with his crew to confront 50. Their teams got into a fight in the street and started letting off shots, but only one dude got hit in the leg and everyone scattered. After taking actual shots at each other, nobody expected 50 in the game to ever squash their beef. At that point, it seemed like they would be ops for life. But then out of nowhere, they announced a peace treaty and both donated 100k to the Harlem Boys Choir. Game told Hip Hop DX last year that Jimmy Iovine and Interscope are the ones who made the whole plan. They wanted to squash the beef and told 50 and Game to pick whatever charity they wanted to support. But the truce didn't last long. After Game went back to the West Coast, 50 allegedly dissed him on the track Gun Jam with the line, You screaming your gun jam? Nigga, your gun ain't jam. They let off, your bitch ass ran. You screaming your gun jam? I know you're tight fam. You pussy, I understand. You screaming your gun jam? You run when the shots fire. You scared the fuck to death of that hollow tip diet. That's when Game shot back with 300 bars and running. A 15 minute long diss track full of wild shots at everyone in G-Unit. 
He aired 50 out rapping, Ask 50, it get lonely on top. You can hate me or love me, but now the cops the only homies you got. When it's beef, we eat. When we hear baloney, we pop. You sell records, but a jit jit G you not. That's when Game started a campaign in merch line called G You Not and kept up the pressure on his old crew. Apparently, it had a pretty big effect because Game says Interscope cut him a $1 million check for the rights to the brand, so he couldn't keep putting pressure on him. But before Game hands it over the rights to G You Not, it got one of 50's homies locked up and another one killed. The game was being managed by a dude named Jimmy Henchman. And one day, Tony Yayo and Lodi Mac spotted his teenage son on the street wearing a GU Not shirt. Yayo allegedly put hands on him, then Lodi Mac escalated the situation and pistol whipped him. Henchman allegedly sent shooters at 50 after it went down, and Tony Yayo's mom's house got shot up too. Mac went to prison over the assault, and just two weeks after he came home, he was found dead in the street. It took a while for the case to get sorted out, but in 2017, Henchman was convicted of paying for the murder and got hit with a life sentence. Game was the first dude to get kicked out of G-Unit, but he wasn't the last. Young Buck joined G-Unit and started putting on for the crew heavy. His debut album went platinum and kept up G-Unit's momentum in the industry, but he was also ready to jump into some real action when he needed to. At the 2004 Vibe Awards, G-Unit was there to support Dr. Dre, who was getting a Lifetime Achievement Award that year. Suge Knight and Dre still had major issues over what went down at Death Row Records back in the 90s, and Suge allegedly sent a dude named Jimmy Johnson to put hands on him. Right before Dre was going to take the stage, Johnson ran up and threw a punch. A massive fight broke out, and Young Buck didn't hesitate to jump in. He was backstage with Lloyd Banks when it started because they were supposed to present the next award, but when he saw the fight going down, they ran out to help the crew. I just seen Dre doing doing his shit, you know what I mean? Going for what he what, what he could, you know what I mean, at the time. But I just seen him getting down, you know what I mean, with a motherfucker. And I couldn't, I'm looking for 50, you know? I'm trying to find 50 more than anything. Like, but big bro, there's so much commotion, bro, that I, I just said, you know what, fuck this shit, you know what I mean? Let me get out here and get off the stage and, and get to it with the gang, because that's how shit go. Buck saw Dre trying to fight off like three dudes. That's when he grabbed a fork off the table and stabbed Johnson in the chest. Originally, the cops wanted him for attempted murder, but Buck ended up pleading guilty to a lesser assault charge and got off easy with just three years probation. Even though Buck caught a charge for G-Unit, a couple years later, rumors were flying that 50 had beef with him. 50 had previewed a bunch of G-Unit tracks for MTV, and fans noticed that Buck wasn't on any of them. They both told the media everything was cool at first, but then one week later, 50 went back on Hot 97 and kicked Buck out of the crew just like he did with the game. He said that Buck was spending too much money and rocking with dudes he wasn't cool with. Kicking Buck out like that was a low blow, but then 50 went even further by leaking a phone call where Buck was crying and asking for forgiveness. I done got out of line a little bit with you. I swear to God I have. It was a bad look for everyone involved, and Buck clapped back with the track Tape Conversation and rapped, Bitch niggas do bitch things. Look at 50, what he do just to get fame. Record my phone call when I spoke from the heart. That was a year ago. This was a joke from the start. You a hoe, I know. The only people that record conversations is 5-0. Getting kicked out of G-Unit basically ended Young Buck's career. He was still signed to the G-Unit records label, but couldn't release any music. Plus, he owed the IRS millions and wasn't bringing in any money. Buck filed for bankruptcy protection to try and save some of his property. But in July 2010, the government seized his house, jewelry, studio, and auctioned it all off. He lost a lot from the IRS. But a couple years later, his situation got even worse when he almost lost his life. In 2012, Buck was chilling at a club in Nashville with his girl when they got into some kind of argument with another group there. Buck and his girl left the spot and got in their whip. And that's when someone rode by and started letting off shots. Buck didn't get hit, but his girlfriend took a bullet to the shoulder. Luckily, they both made out of the situation a lot, but then Buck took another loss when he got hit with an 18-month prison sentence on a weapons case. G-Unit finally dropped their second album as a group in 2008, but by that point, it was clear they were on a downhill slide. The record only sold around 100k in the first week, which was less than a third of what their first collab album moved in the same time. Besides G-Unit falling off, the rest of the label wasn't doing great either. 50 signed the legendary crew MOP to the label, and it seemed like a huge win. MOP started promoting new music and showing up in videos, but they never actually dropped anything with G-Unit Records. It's not clear exactly what went down behind the scenes, but a couple years later, they just left the crew and moved on. 
Olivia was also supposed to drop an album with G-Unit Records, but it never came out. She popped off when 50 featured her on the track Candy Shop, but she claims they had no idea how to promote an R&B artist, so they never released the record she recorded. Maserati Fox and 50 Cent had known each other for years, and in 2007, 50 signed them to the label. Fox hopped on a few mixtape tracks, but his album didn't come out either, and he ended up leaving G-Unit Records after a year. Then a few years later, Fox was tragically gunned down in broad daylight. 50 kept it pushing with his own career though, and branching to other projects like acting. And for a while, there wasn't any news with G-Unit. But in 2012, he made it clear that it wasn't all good behind the scenes. 50 told XXL that he disabled Tony Yayo and Lloyd Banks by doing too much for him. He said that he was the only one ever putting in work, so his homies just took it easy and rode the way. Dropping game and young buck like he did was crazy, but nobody expected 50 to start taking shots at Yayo and Banks. The three of them had been together for years, so when 50 aired him out like that, rumors were flying that G-Unit was over. Yayo squashed the breakup rumors on Twitter though and said, Why would I blow shots at 50? The media want to see G-Unit fail so bad. We won too much in front of niggas. Everybody running with our format. Two more years went by without any news. Then in February 2014, Yayo hopped on IG and said that he was quitting the music industry because it was too much for him. When fans asked him why, Yayo said, Too many bitch ass niggas want you to brown nose all the time, homie. He also said that 50 wasn't rocking with him and Banks, even though he laid down his life for G-Unit. It looked like G-Unit was officially over, and the original three members were going their separate ways for good. But then just a couple months later, they had a reunion at Summer Jam, and even Young Buck was there. They also announced a new member of the crew, a Louisiana rapper named Kid Kid. One day after the Summer Jam performance, G-Unit dropped a new track and went on a run of releasing remixes. 50 said that a new G-Unit record was in the works, but they had some mixtapes coming first. They released The Beauty of Independence in 2014, then The Beast is G-Unit the next year. Fans were still waiting on the new album, but it never came out. G-Unit dropped a compilation tape of unreleased songs in 2016, and that was it. After almost two decades as a crew, G-Unit was officially over. In 2018, Kid Kid announced that he was officially leaving and starting his own label. In that same year, 50 dropped the track Crazy and revealed that he wasn't even speaking to Lloyd Banks anymore. He rapped, called my son twice, he ain't picking up the phone. And Banks, me and him don't even talk no more. You know, cause of me, he ain't never have to sell crap. Never use no knife or had to squeeze no strap. But if I go tonight, I bet you I'm hellbound for cocaine distribution and letting off Mac rounds. 50, Tony Yayo, and Lloyd Banks came up rapping in the streets together and trying to break out. When 50 became the hottest rapper in the world, it was a big win for everyone. But it seems like Banks and Yayo just couldn't keep up. 50 definitely isn't the easiest dude in the industry to work with, but other rappers would kill to have the platform and opportunity that Banks and Yayo had. Last year, 50 did an interview with 97.9 The Box and spoke about how everyone on the label blamed him when they didn't sell records. I happened to become the record label. So all of those artists that were around that didn't do exactly what they thought they were supposed mm -hmm. to do is my fault. That they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they give it to me individually. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not the company, it's him. Even if 50 could have handled the situation with G-Unit better, it seems like he might have a point. Tony Yayo only dropped one album all the way back in 2005, and after that, he took his foot off the gas and never released another studio record. Lloyd Banks dropped three albums while he was in G-Unit, but he wasn't grinding as hard as 50 thought he should. After G-Unit officially broke up though, Banks hopped back in the booth and really started grinding. He dropped his album, The Course of the Inevitable, in 2021. It was his first official record in over a decade, but Banks came back to the game swinging. Critics loved the album and called it one of the best rap records in years. It got him a lot of love from hardcore fans, but unfortunately, it didn't make much noise in the mainstream and only sold 12k copies in the first week. Banks didn't let the week sales slow him down though, and he dropped two more records in 2022 and 2023. He might not be in the spotlight like he was back in the G-Unit days, but at least he's still putting in work and keeping his career going. 50 Cent and G-Unit were running the game for a few years together. They started a whole new era of rap and changed the industry, but they just couldn't avoid the drama. Fans hoped they'd eventually squash it all and get back together. But in 2020, 50 said he wanted to just erase G-Unit from his memory forever. G-Unit might not be coming back, but rap fans will never forget how they broke down the industry doors and changed hip-hop forever.